personas huéspedes de otros países. Uh, yo, yo me defiendo en español, soy de Columbus, Ohio, así que digo que soy colombiano, pero colombiano gringo. Uh, aprendí español en Bogotá, Colombia, dos años en un programa de intercambio. Entonces me arreglo un poco, entonces mejor que hablo en, en inglés. Um, I, and I'm in trouble already because this is an old PowerPoint that I reused last night in a hurry and I forgot to change the title and the dates. I'm actually going to talk about the Catholic University student movement in Europe, Cuba, and Brazil from 1922 to 1966. Just a quick overview. Um, I, I need to thank uh, Dr. Vinigain because when I was in getting my master's in uh, Latin American studies here at LAC, uh, several years ago, I had a committee, a, a thesis committee of three people, and about a few weeks before I was departing on a trip to Brazil where I hoped to do research with primary interviews and primary source documents, two of my three uh, committee members left to go to other universities, and I was in big trouble. And uh, the chair of the Religious Studies Department inter introduced me to Anna Maria Bittigain, and there's been a wonderful friendship ever since. She helped me out with dozens of contacts in Brazil and um, saved my trip, basically. And so it's been a pleasure and an honor to work with her over the years with, uh, uh, with her archives. And I decided to give the overview because I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the resources that are in her archives that I only, I only scratched the surface of using them. So my uh, research, my, my history dissertation was on the Catholic University student movement in Brazil, but it was a comparative study, partly inspired by our chair, Victor Oribe's emphasis on comparative studies and case studies. Uh, you probably didn't know that, but several years ago you talked about comparative study. And so I did a comparative study of, uh, of a Catholic organization that existed in Cuba and in Brazil up through the Cuban Revolution and the Brazilian military coup of 1964. And I traced its roots back to uh, is European roots and looked at some of the differences in two different uh, forms of this particular uh, university movement. And so I used uh, primary source documents from uh, Anna Maria's uh, uh, archives. She has about 15 boxes of documents that she's collected over her lifetime from the 1930s through the 1960s and even in the 80s. Uh, her the documents include uh, material in French and Portuguese and Spanish, Italian. I probably even saw Latin in there somewhere. Um, and so uh, it was uh, stretching uh, linguistically, but it was extremely useful. This is the uh, does this show the yeah this is the box uh, that I used for the uh, student uh, the uh, young uh, student movement in Brazil. And of course, most of you are aware that there was juke, jack, joke, different forms of specialized Catholic action. And so one of the things I wanted to see was how general Catholic action differed from specialized Catholic action over a 40 year time period. And why the organization, the university youth in Cuba, took a different ideological turn than the university youth in Brazil. And so uh, I traveled, in addition to Anna Maria Bittigain's archives, which were abundant, and I just scratched the surface. I also traveled to Sao Paulo uh, and did went through 40 hours of interviews, um, 40 hours of uh, oral interviews with member, former members of the, uh, uh, the JUCE, the University uh, Youth in, Catholic Youth in Brazil. I spent some time in the University of Florida in Gainesville going through uh, newspaper sources. They have an extensive library of uh, resources. Uh, Will somebody tell me when 15 minutes is almost up? I left my clock over there. Okay, good. Uh, so I went uh, to the library at the University of Florida and went through a number of magazines and newspapers from Brazil. Um, some of them I was able to find online, uh, which was very helpful. I looked at, uh, at the numeric growth in university attendance in Brazil. In the course of both Brazil, particularly in Brazil, but also in Cuba, there was an exploding 
uh, growth of higher education during the 50s and 60s. And uh, I looked at the expansion, first, of general Catholic action, which began in Rome at the initiative of Pope Pius, I believe it was the 11th, uh, and how it expanded out throughout Europe and then later into uh, the Americas. Um, then I looked at, uh, of course, general Catholic action, as most of you, I think, already know, was parish and gender-based. It had four branches adult men, adult women, uh, children, boys and girls. It had little autonomy from the bishops, although it was nominally lay directed, but heavily clerical. It pro primarily focused on liturgy, doctrine, and piety, and it was influenced by the Catholic experience with fascism, particularly in Spain in 1932. A specialized act Catholic action was quite different. It began in 1924 in Brussels, Belgium. It developed a class focus rather than a parish uh, based focus. It had it had a lot of greater role for lay leadership and a higher level of autonomy from Episcopal control. It was influenced not so much by fascism as it was Western European democratic pluralism. Also, its primary competitor in uh, Paris and in Belgium was uh, uh, young socialist movements during those years, as opposed to the young youth fascist movements in Spain and Italy. And so uh, it began in 1924 with uh, 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 Father uh, Cardine, Joseph Cardine, who was a working class priest. It expanded to France, and then from France and Belgium to uh, to uh, Quebec, and, from, and then to other countries, uh, similar to the uh, general Catholic action, and then eventually from uh, Quebec, it expanded into Brazil. I found documents and letters from uh, Quebecois, French Canadian priests that were traveling to Brazil that made contact with the general Catholic action in Brazil and began to talk about specialized Catholic action, a more of a class based focus. And uh, the specialized Catholic action in Italy in the 1930s came under intense pressure from the fascist government, which reacted violently to Catholic attempts to reach the working class youth. And so the church had to back away from this class-based focus and agree not to uh, reach working class youth or not to compete with the fascists, uh, which then influenced in my, in my thinking and influenced later, uh, later experiences of the uh, general Catholic action in Cuba. Brazil became much more highly influenced by the specialized Catholic action. Cuba attempted to modify specialized Catholic action and cautiously incorporated some aspects while remaining primarily influenced by the general Catholic action in Italy and Spain. I've forgotten the name of the dear Hermano Victorino. It's been about four years since I defended my thesis, so forgive me if I forget a few details. It's about time I go back and reread it, I suppose, and edit it and publish it. But uh, uh, Hermano Victorino was a French priest in Cuba. He had been he had left France during the uh, the uh, anti-clerical reaction and the laws that were passed in 1905, I believe it was, and he went to Quebec. From Quebec, he volunteered to be a missionary and went to Cuba. He was uh, an exponent of general Catholic action, but he resisted uh, implementing specialized Catholic action when that later came to Cuba. And one of the concerns of the bishops in Cuba, uh, which were highly uh, influenced by the Spanish church, of course, because uh, most of them were Spanish. Uh, in his case, he was French, but uh, one of the concerns was that by uh, granting more lay autonomy and uh, implementing specialized Catholic action in Cuba, it would cause the, the clergy to lose control of the youth movement. And uh, this, of course, uh, uh, kept it on a more conservative track. Not that there were not more progressive students in in the uh, organizations, but overall, the uh, tenor of the uh, Cuban experience was more conservative. And then, of course, along came Fidel Castro. Some of the, uh, many of the youth in Catholic action went to fight in the mountains with the Cuban Revolution, and later became disillusioned when they, when uh, Castro identified himself as a Marxist-Leninist. And uh, even today, there are in Miami, there are uh, veterans of. Cuban Revolution who were in Catholic action who are 
very, very conservative, uh, part of the exile experience here in Miami. And uh, in Brazil, the experience was very different. In Brazil, the uh, the the uh, Catholic action that had been influenced by specialized Catholic action developed more of a class-based in, uh, emphasis. The the advisors and assessors in Brazil were much more empowering and much more uh, open-handed in their their leadership of the university Catholic youth and the working Catholic youth youth, and so they empowered uh, lay leadership and uh, managed to stay in a position of advice, but not in control. And so the uh, Brazilian organizations developed a much more politi stronger political consciousness and actually became very prominent uh, just before the uh, military coup under João Goulart. And were in a position, one of the uh, Brazilian Catholic Action students was elected as the uh, Brazil student organization and they were meeting with the president and giving advice. They were involved in literacy campaigns. And there was a very strong uh, political involvement as well as social involvement in Brazil, uh, which then came into direct conflict with the uh, regime after the military coup. And the military coup, of course, uh, was coming from a different ideological bent than the Cuban Revolution, uh, uh, preserving and defending the status quo, which then, uh, I would say, argue, caused the uh, the already progressive Brazilian movement to react the other way and become more radicalized. Some and many students left Brazilian Catholic Action after that time, especially in 1966, and became involved in purely political movements, revolutionary movements, insurrectionary movements. Uh, many students were uh, captured and tortured in prison. And so uh, the Brazilian experience was entirely different from the Cuban experience. But what I attempted to show in my dissertation was the a 40-year trajectory leading up to that, mo that moment of crisis. And uh, uh, I, I believe Gustavo Gutierrez, if I remember correctly, uh, said at some point that a lot of liberation theology owed a debt to the Brazilian Catholic uh, University student experience. And so uh, I would uh, argue that for the, the uh, organization of Brazil uh, greatly prepared the way, prepared the seedbed for liberation theology at a later date. And a lot of this information is in Anna Maria's archives. A lot of it has not been read yet. It would take a team of people uh, several years to go through everything and translate and document what's there. So I hope others will come along and make use of her archives for uh, theses and dissertations. Thank you.